Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's so you man on Twitter, the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming non safe for work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> I push it back in and I push it back in and head outside. Leo's quiet as he drives, occasionally checking the rearview mirror. Everyone else is pretty silent, too. It's weird being in a car with Carl and him just sitting there quietly, not staring at his phone or anything. It's like he doesn't know what to look at, and is stuck pondering his own thoughts for a change. I look back at Jenna, who's monitoring her phone for any sign that the signal will stay consistent enough to get a message out. It's hard to believe it, but she was actually trying to apologize earlier. In her own weird way, of course. Part of me wanted to say I was sorry for what I said at the river about how she treats her family, but that would be lying. I'm not sorry for what I said, but I can tell when something hit hard and hurt more than I'm happy with. People dance around shit all the time when so much of this bullshit could have been avoided if people were just honest with each other. I roll down the window and prop my knees up on the dash, craning my neck some, some to peer at TJ in the mirror. He knows I'm watching him. Hell, I think everyone's watching him. Even the socket man is a cover story. Even the socket man is a cover story. Him keeping silent about all this for so long is just cruel. Did he truly think not mentioning the fur color of the person in the water with Sydney was for the best? Maybe he thought he could avoid a situation like this. Our group getting shattered. Well, our group is fucked now. No way in hell I was going to hang out with anyone but Carl after all this shit. It wasn't like it was all peaches and gravy these past few years anyway. Chase, TJ, and Jenna hadn't so much as texted me since they left for college. And Leo... He used to visit me back at the warehouse when I packed freight. We fucked a couple times, but he seemed to get more and more disgusted with the arrangement. I couldn't tell if it was with him or with me or him, but it was awkward as hell. I mean, I'm not the sentimental type, but when you're being screwed by somebody and they glance away any time you look at them, it makes you feel like shit. I eventually had enough. I told him I wasn't his fucking otter and to get a flashlight like the rest of us. He cut me out of his life right then and there. He even stopped visiting Carl. And shitty watching somebody who was once a social butterfly turn into an absolute recluse. For the first part of this week, he was trying so hard to act like his old self that nothing has changed. We were fags and weirdos in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. Of course we stuck together at first. But as Carl says, shit's broke now. As we make the turn off, off onto Market Street, I spot the familiar dust-covered plastic flamingos that adorn Auntie's yard. The manufactured house was built back in the 80s and still dons this sort of faded turquoise color scheme. She added these pink diamond-shaped bathroom tiles all, all around Roof's Edge a couple years ago, too. For Halloween and Christmas, she hangs up neon color tube lighting, and I swear you can see her house lit up from miles away. You know? Water time. Ah. I'm not entirely sure what aesthetic she's going for. Carl called it vintage trailer trash once, and I guess that's fitting enough. Leo slows the van some as we approach. I don't see any lights on. No car on the driveway. She can't have parked in the garage. Shit's still packed full of box boxes of Uncle's stuff. Guys? The salamander pokes the glass of the window next to him, pointing at something across the street. That's a Kara's place, right? Our old bus driver. It looks like somebody broke in. Is that recent? Colored glass of the front door is shattered. Pop. Piles of Technicolor shards are splayed across the concrete porch. Yeah, very. As in it wasn't like this when I stopped by this morning. People are taking advantage of emergency services being out. Hope she's okay. Her car's not here either. They broke her statue too. Little sombrero chihuahua man statue which she had next to the door is completely shattered. It's smashed into a hundred pieces. The wooden, the wooden Bienvenido sign that used to hang around his neck is split in half and laying in the dirt. Good, Jenna mumbles. I clutch my rifle a little tighter, trying to see if there's any movement going on inside the house. It's completely still beyond the light swing of pink lace curtains from the breeze outside. It's still pretty. It's still probably best we speak with the mayor. Perhaps with what's going on, she returned to City Hall. My heart drops in my chest. Yeah, that makes sense. Hopefully the crazy guy's gone by now. Eh, I don't know. She doesn't She doesn't usually work on Saturdays. Jenna raises an eyebrow at me. Well, this is quite a Saturday, Flynn. Leo sighs, putting the van into gear. City Hall it is. 
It's well into the night by the time we pull into the gravel parking lot. Sure enough, Auntie's teal hatchback jeep is parked by the side of the building. Daxton squints at it, then points. An extra bumper sticker! On the chrome bumper, there's a decal of what I guess is a silhouette of Captain Amicus with some sort of insect on his face. In golden spacey font, it reads, These things are harmless, don't worry. I didn't know your aunt was cool! She's not. I grumble idly, my mind racing as to try to think of a distraction to keep everyone away outside. Everyone but Carl and I are already getting out of the van. The ram gives me a nervous look before nodding at me and speaking up. Hey, dudes, uh, wait a second. What? Leo's tone is curt as he looks back at the ram, who's sluggishly pulling himself outside. I feel like I'm gonna be sick. Now? It's all the freeze-dried ice cream. It's so shitty. I can't handle it. Carl begins to make retching noises, and Jenna quickly covers her ears. Oh, God, Carl. Yeah, please just don't throw up in my van, yeah? Um... Guys? Carl continues to make some of the most visceral, gut-wrenching, erping sounds I've heard. Taking out water time. Carl can... <clears throat> they practically sound wet. Guys? I turn and see that what TJ is trying to get our attention for. A whole bunch of cars are driving down the road in our direction, like a convoy. I recognize the one in front. It's Mark and his SUV. He works here at City Hall. They start to pull into the parking lot, quickly filling up to the point where folks are starting to park on the road. What's going on? Here's my chance. That's Mark. Maybe he'll have some answers. I need to head inside real quick. I'll be right back. Jenna nods slowly, watching what looks like a bunch of townsfolk get out of their cars in front of us. I pass the still hunched over Carl and give him a squeeze on the shoulder. Thanks. I feel like I'm actually going to puke now after that. Don't. I head inside. It's quiet when I enter, though I can hear the subtle sounds of shuffling paper coming from down the hall. I'm starting to feel this strange sort of pain in my head, like someone's pressing an ice pack to the front of my skull. Maybe it's because I'm nervous. Regardless, here I go. I walk slightly, I walk lightly, peering around the corner to Auntie's office. Her fingers flick along various pages within a manila folder, her tropical flower print scarf swaying with her every movement. I watch her, illuminated only by the soft glow of the moonlight outside. I'm wrought with, uh, with this uneasy sort of feeling where I can't tell if, she's actu if she actually knows that I'm here or not, or whether she cares. It's a familiar feeling, but never one I quite got used to. There's a hell of a ruckus outside. You looking for something? Anything of substance regarding the whole hysteria business? She speaks plainly. What? I'll tell you in a second. Is Mark here yet? She cranes her neck to peer out the tiny slitted window in the corner of her office. If there's not much of a view other than the side of a sagebrush. I saw him pulling up in his SUV outside with like a whole convoy of folk following him. This about Clint? She looks up, seeming to notice my repeater for the first time. Her brow furrows. You know, under any other circumstances, I'd give you a chewing out for bringing that inside. I did hear he's been making a hell of a scene around town, waving a gun around. Figured it was a meth binge until I saw Dale doing the same damn thing. Diner Dale? That fucking otter is kind of a softie, ain't he? You don't think it got to do with his painkiller addiction. I pop four of the pills he takes earlier, you know, for the aches. It ain't the sort of thing to put you in a gunfighting mood. I nod. Despite everything she's telling me, I can't really focus on it. I keep looking back toward the closed reading room door behind me. Fuck. May as well just get it over with. I take a deep breath. Did you let Chase out? What? She seems confused at the sudden change of topic. Chase? Leah's lover boy? Former lover boy. He hasn't been pounding on the door to get out? Boy, what are you talking about? I haven't seen him since you brought him in in Hendrick's boy to City Hall the other afternoon. I turn, moving out to the hallway and unlocking the reading room door. I always thought it was weird that it had a lock facing the hall. Though I think Auntie mentioned there used to be a back exit through here. Second y'all, water time. What the hell? Flint, what'd you do? I ignore my aunt's exasperated voice as I push open the door, stepping into the dark room. It's mustier than a skunk's ass in here with all the rain damage. I can practically feel the mildew and mold on my toes as I run my hand along the wall. Eventually, I find the light switch. Chase? He's not here, is he? Carl's voice takes me by surprise, the ram standing slightly behind me. And of course, Daxton's there, too. The salamander gawping at the interior like it's some kind of museum. I can't believe you locked Chase up. Like, do city clerks have the authority to do that? Not unless he's, like, archiving him. You told him? 
A glare down at the ramp and quickly throws up the flat of his paws defensively. He's your roommate, dude. Come on. It's not like he's part of the old, part of the old group anyway. Fortunately, like Carl said, I don't see the rest of the gang. Carl notices me peering past him and speaks up. They're uh, talking with Mark outside. It's about time he showed up. Hi, Mayor. Hi. The two of them wave awkwardly. Auntie looks at the both of them with a sort of perplexed frown. Hello, y'all. She responds abruptly, quickly looking back up to me. Now, Flynn. Just give me a sec. He's gotta still be in here. I see a stained blue v-neck shirt laying on the ground in the corner by the old bookshelves. Chase! Still no response. It's then I notice there's something moving on his shirt. Little specks that seem to be gathering the folds of the fabric. Oh, fuck me! I hold up my arm across the doorway, pushing Carl and Daxon back. Dude, what? Auntie, did Mark set off those bug bombs after work on Monday like I asked? I'm assuming by your tone that he did not. They hatched. Oh, goodness. Can we not play the pronoun game right now? What are y'all talking about? Because <laughs> he said they. I see the unused... I see the unused can sitting knocked over in the corner. Stay back, Black Widows. I lower my arm and walk over to it, quickly popping the top and watching the fogger begin to mist the foul-smelling fumigation spray into the air. The effect is near instant. The skittering pattern of the little spiders begins to grow more erratic. I watch as, as an adult one on Chase's shirt clambers on top of an increasingly still pile of little spiders. It just sits there, writhing. I can feel something on my foot, too, but my scales are too thick for it to be of any threat to me. I recall mutter behind me. I take back what I've always said. You do have balls. Excuse me. No, sorry, M Mayor Moore. Boys, I do not have time for this. As I look past the shelves, I see a big lump of fur curled up in the corner under one of the old metal desks. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck! I dash over, grabbing at the otter's scruff and yanking his ass out of there. He's surprisingly light, and I realize I've never picked him up before. Oh, damn! Is he okay? Water! Give me water! There's some in the mini-fridge. I'll get it. As I pull him into better light, he looks like absolute shit. His lips are chapped bloody, and the whites of his eyes are bloodshot. There's also dribbles of vomit on the floor, which I have the misfortune of stepping in. Vomit spiders. Fucking great. There you go. Chase, wake the fuck up! I give his face a hard slap. Carl winces. The otter wheezes raspily, letting out a kind of low moan. Man, he's terrified of spiders! I know. Karma, right? The ram speaks in an easy tone, visibly uncomfortable at seeing Chase like this. Yeah. Maybe. Next thing I know, Auntie's handing me a bottle of water. I bring it to his lips. Ugh. Ooh, excuse me. Drink, you stupid idiot. If this was, if this was a prank of yours, it ain't, it ain't a real gut buster, Flan. Move over, you're gonna drown him. I feel a weird tingle in the back of my neck. Reluctantly, I step aside. I look at Chase, and part of me hopes he never wakes up. And I feel sick. Well, why is he just in his britches? I blink, glancing down and getting an eyeful of Chase's briefs. You didn't undress him before you shoved him in there, right? Or was that part of it? Jesus, no! God, no! I didn't do that. Daxon gives me a dubious look before shifting his ga concerned gaze back to the otter. Auntie, meanwhile, is popping his head up on a couple office chair cushions, quietly urging the otter to drink as she wets his lips. They part for a moment, and Chase complies enough to get a swallow down. Again, part of me breathes a sigh of relief, while the other half seems to be filled with this sort of angry dread. Alright, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold-tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier anyway. If y'all want your names in the credits and access to our not-safe-for-work contents, as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.